Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J-Man Time and today I have a video on rare Chinese rifles, submachine guns, and machine guns of the Chinese military during the Second Sino-Japanese War and the Second World War as a whole, and the Chinese Civil War and the Chinese Civil Conflicts as a whole. Between 1937 and 1945, China was invaded by the Empire of Japan, and during that time period, the Chinese military, both the Nationalist Kuomintang and the Chinese Red Army under Mao Zedong used a variety of different rifles manufactured in China. There were also other factions in China, the pro-Japanese collaboration armies based in Manchukuo, Mejiang, and a few other smaller territories occupied by the Imperial Japanese Army or acting as Japanese puppet states. So let's go over some of the rare rifles used by the very Chinese factions during the Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II as a whole. And the first rifle on the list is the Type 29, also known as the Gongdong Shanghai Type 29 from 1907. The Type 29 is a bolt action rifle designed in 1907-1908 and it is actually a copy of the German Mauser Model 1907. The German Mauser Model 1907 was an export rifle chambered in the rare 6.8 by 57 millimeter Mauser cartridge. These Type 29 rifles had a 5 round internal magazine and had an effective range of about 500 to 1000 yards. In 1915, some of these were rechambered in 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser. But these rifles were actually purchased during the era of the Qing or Qing government in China. Now later on, this government was overthrown and in 1924, China actually descended into a civil war between the nationalist Kuomintang the Chinese Red Army and a bunch of other factions like the Fagian clique and a few other um, separatist states operating inside of China. By the time Japan invaded China in 1937, a lot of these rifles had been phased out but a few thousand were still in use during the Second Sino-Japanese War with the Chinese Nationalist Army. And some were also captured by the Imperial Japanese Army and later given to Chinese collaboration troops. But the Type 29 is the first of the rare Chinese bolt action rifles to be used in the Second Sino Japanese War. And the next rifle on the list is the Guangxi Arsenal Type 4. The Guangxi Arsenal Type 4 was actually a redesign of the Type 29 rifle for the 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser. And this was designed right after the overthrow of the Qing government in which China was later renamed the Republic of China around 1914 through 1915. And this rifle had a 5 round internal magazine and it was also based on on the German Mauser Model 1907 rifle but in 7.92 millimeter Mauser. These rifles were also used during the Civil War era of 1924 through 1930 and they were also used during the Second Sino-Japanese War by the Chinese nationalist Kuomintang army. Some of these were also captured by the Japanese forces and used by Japanese troops and Chinese collaboration of troops also during the Second Sino-Japanese War of the Second World War. Now, the next rifle isn't a rare rifle. It is an offshoot of a famous rifle, and that is the Type 24 Mauser, also known as the Kankai Shek rifle, which was used by the Chinese Kuomintang as their standard rifle starting in 1935. Now, this rifle was actually a copy of the German Karabiner 98K or the K98 bolt action rifle, which had just entered service with the newly formed Wehrmacht of the German army, uh, which also used the K98 as the standard issued rifle for the German army in the Second World War. Now, this rifle was chambered for the same cartridge, the 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser, and over 3.8 million of these rifles were produced during the Second Sino-Japanese War. Some of these rifles were also given to the Chinese Red Army under Mao Zedong when both the Nationalist and Communist forces joined forces in order to fight the Imperial Japanese Army in which they created the United Front. 
Some of these rifles were also captured by the Imperial Japanese forces, and many of these rifles were also given to Japanese, to pro-Japanese Chinese collaboration troops operating on the Japanese side of the war. After World War II, many of these rifles were used by the Kuomintang during the Second Chinese Civil War of 1946 through 1950. And many of these rifles were also used by Chinese forces and the North Korean forces during the Korean War of 1950 through 1953, making it one of the longest serving bolt action rifles in post Qing era China history. The next Chinese bolt action rifle was actually designed in the Manchuria region of China, and that is the Mukden Arsenal Leo Type 13, also known as the Mukden Mauser. Now, this rifle was a bolt action rifle designed between 1924 and 1925, and it was designed during the first Chinese Civil War, of 1924 through around 1928 through 1930. And this rifle was designed by the Fong Tin Click operating in Manchuria. Now, there were two versions of the Type 13. There was one chambered in the 7.92 millimeter Mauser, and a second version chambered in the 6.5 by 50 millimeter semi rimmed Arasaka cartridge, which was later used by Japanese forces in occupied Manchuria. Now, in around 1931 through 1932, Manchuria was actually invaded by Japan, and later it was incorporated into the Japanese Empire, but it was later turned into a Japanese puppet state named Manchuko. It was a Japanese puppet state that also participated in the Second Sino-Japanese War on the Japanese side. And during that time period, these Mukden Mauser Type 13s were produced for the Manchukan Army. And at least 5,000 of these were produced for the Imperial Japanese Army, chambered in the 6.5 by 50 millimeter cartridge. Over 140,000 of these rifles were made in total. Now, later on in 1945, the Soviet Union actually invaded Manchukuo and overran the Manchukuo and Japanese armies operating in the region. Many of these rifles were later given to the Chinese Red Army and they were later used during the Second Chinese Civil War of 1946 through 1950. The next rifle on the list is the Type 8 Leo Guifu or Horse Rifle. And this was another rare Chinese boat action rifle that was produced in 1940 during the third year of the Japanese invasion of 1937 through 1945. And this rifle was also chambered in the 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser. And it was actually a fusion of different Mauser systems from the model 1898, the model 1893, and also the Spanish and Chilean Mausers that were also being sold to China. It is unknown how many of these rifles were produced, but if I had to estimate, it would probably be around five to 8,000 at the most. And these were used until the end of that conflict and later used in the Second Chinese Civil War of 1946 to 1950. The next rifle on the list is actually a rather strange one. And that is the Shanghai Remington Rolling Block Rifle, which was designed sometime in the 1920s or 30s. Now, this was actually a basic Remington rifle that was rechambered or redesigned for the 7 by 57 millimeter Mauser. And these were produced in the city of Shanghai. Now, in 1932, Japan actually tried to take the city of Shanghai during the early stages of the Manchuria campaign, but ultimately failed. Later on, in 1937, Japan invaded Shanghai again and later captured the city. And during this battle, many of these Chinese civilians and military police operating in the city on the Kuomintang side used some of these Remington rolling blocks manufactured in Shanghai, making it one of the rare rifles to be used in the Second Sino-Japanese War. The next rifle on the list is the Manchuko Type 45 Mauser, and this was one of the last rifles produced in the Japanese puppet state of Manchuko. These rifles were bolt action rifles produced between 1944 and 1945, and they were chambered in either the 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser or the 6.5 by 50 millimeter Arasaka. 
Osaka. They also had a five round magazine and they were also used by Manchukuo forces against Soviet troops when the Soviet Union invaded China in August of 1945. This ultimately ended in a failure for the Manchukuo forces as they were overrun. After World War II, these rifles were given to the Chinese Kuomintang. Some of these rifles ended up in the hands of the Chinese nationalist troops during the Chinese Civil War. Next rifle on the list is actually a rare semi-automatic rifle designed in 1934 and that is the Gen C District Arsenal semi-automatic rifle. And this rifle was a prototype or a limited production rifle designed in 1934 by a Chinese lieutenant from the 8th Route Army who went by the name Wen Ching Ding. And this weapon was chambered for either the 7.92 millimeter Mauser or the 6.8 by 57 millimeter Mauser cartridge. It was, it had a six round internal magazine and it is one of the rare limited production rifles that was later used during the Second Sino-Japanese War of 1937. Not much is known about this rifle outside of this, but a few of these weapons do survive in various Chinese museums, like the one seen here, which can be found at the Beijing Military Museum. Now, let's go over some of the rare Chinese machine guns and submachine guns that were used during the Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II in China as a whole. And the first gun on the list is the Chinese Shoshot, designed between 1929 and 1930. And these were actually old World War I vintage American and French Shoshats that were rebuilt or redesigned when they were sold to China during the Civil War year. And these Shoshats were chambered in the 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser. They had a 20 round magazine, but there, these Chinese Shoshats had a straight magazine instead of the curved magazine seen on either the American or French show shots. They still had the same rate of fire of around 240 rounds per minute, but it is unknown how many of these were produced. They were extremely rare as China had other machine guns they purchased from other countries, including the US and France and the Soviet Union. So they really didn't need these show shots, but some of these did see the front line used during the Second Sino-Japanese War. In fact, there were two versions one using the standard Shoshat model fitted with a straight magazine and a second version of the Shoshat which was completely redesigned and also had a different stock. These some of the rarer machine guns or light machine guns used by Chinese forces during the Second Sino-Japanese War. Next is the Tsingtao Arsenal Model 1927. Now the Tsingtao Arsenal Model 1927 was a Chinese redesign or model modification of the German MP18 submachine gun from World War I. The only difference between these two weapons is the Chinese version had a straight down magazine rather than a side mounted magazine like you would have seen on the German version of the MP18. This weapon was chambered in the standard 7.63 by 25 millimeter Mauser and had a 32 round magazine and had a standard 450 rounds per minute, the same as the German MP18. Only about 15,000 of these were produced before the Second Sino-Japanese War. Many of these were also used by Japanese troops when they were captured on the front line. And some of these were even used against American forces in the Pacific Theater of World War II. Making it one of the rare submachine guns to be used by Chinese forces in the Second Sino-Japanese War. And by Japanese troops in the Second World War in the Pacific Theater of the Second World War. The next submachine gun or select fire carbine is the Chinese Mauser C96 and these were Chinese select fire pistol carbines that were produced around 1930 and these were actually a modification of the German C96 broom handle Mauser and other Mauser machine pistols like the Astra model 900 which were produced in Spain except the Chinese manufacturer dares to have a longer barrel and they also had a permanently attached stock. Now these weapons actually had a select fire so they could be used in either semi or fully automatic mode and they were fitted with either a 20 round box magazine and had a rate of fire of around 800 to 1200 rounds per minute. Now these weapons were actually produced by the Chinese nationalists or the Kuomintang starting in 1930 and they became some of the more common pistol carbines used by the Chinese forces in the second world war. The next submachine gun is actually a strange one. 
and that is the Mokden Arsenal Type 2, which was designed around 1943 through 1944. Now, this submachine gun was actually a copy of the Japanese Nambu Type 2 submachine gun, which was produced in 1935. Now, this Mukden Arsenal Type 2 submachine gun was actually produced in Manchuko, which was part of a Japanese puppet state. Strangely enough, this weapon was also chambered in the .45 ACP cartridge, which was the same cartridge used in the American Thompson submachine gun. Now, remember, Thompson submachine guns were sold to China via the United States and Tommy guns were also being produced in China by various Chinese arsenals. I assumed that Manchuko or Manchukao was probably producing or probably making some Chinese Thompson submachine guns and decided to fuse the Tommy gun with the Japanese Nambu Type 2 submachine gun to create this Mukden Arsenal Type 2. Now, it is unknown how many of these were actually made during the last days of World War II in China, but I would estimate probably no more than a hundred. Keep in mind, the Manchukuo army mostly used Japanese weapons, but they also had their own standard rifle, the Type 13 Mukden Arsenal Mauser, as I mentioned earlier. So this Mukden Arsenal Type 2 is just one of the rare submachine guns issued to Manchukuo troops towards the very end of World War II in Manchukuo. Manchuria, China. The next submachine gun is the Chinese Sten Mark II. Now, starting in around 1942, the British started supplying both the Chinese Kuomintang and their allies, the Communists, with Sten gun or Sten submachine guns. Now, some of these, some of those submachine guns in the Communist area were rechambered for the Soviet 7.62 by 25 millimeter Soviet cartridge, and these were fitted with a 32 round submachine gun magazine. They fired six to eight hundred rounds per minute. And these were some of the rare Sten guns or Chinese submachine guns used in the Second World War. These were also later used by Chinese Communist forces during the Korean War of 1950 through 1953. And they were also used during the Chinese Civil War, the Second Civil War of 1946 through 1950. So this is one of the rare modifications of the Sten gun in China. Now, the next submachine gun is actually just the Chinese Tommy guns. China actually produced a different, um, an entire class of Thompson submachine guns manufactured by different Chinese arsenals. Now, China began receiving Tommy guns in the late 1920s. So the Chinese began manufacturing some of their own Tommy gun clones. And these were chambered in a variety of different cartridges. Most of them were chambered in the .45 ACP, but there were also some chambered in the Soviet 7.62 by 25 millimeter, and there were also some chambered in the .38 ACP cartridge, the semi-automatic pistol cartridge. So the Chinese Tommy guns are actually some of the rarer ones. There are a bunch of Chinese Tommy guns that were chambered in other cartridges, but not much information is known. Only a handful of examples survive of these rare Chinese manufactured Thompson submachine guns. And finally, the strangest submachine gun on the list is a is a submachine gun that really has no name. Now, this submachine gun can be found, an example of this submachine gun can be found in the Beijing Military Museum. So I just simply call it the Chinese Thompson Carbine, as that is the only thing I could come up with what this thing is. Now, these were actually last ditch submachine gun carbines produced in the nationalist areas of China. Now, these strange carbines were actually produced in the nationalist area of China sometime between 1944 and 1945. They were also used during the Chinese Civil War also. So these were right, these uh, Chinese carbines were chambered in a variety of different pistol cartridges. The .45 ACP, the 9 by 19 millimeter Parabellum, the 7.62 millimeter Soviet, and the 7.65 millimeter Mauser, and there were even some produced 
used in .30 carbine. And these weapons had a rate of fire of anywhere from 800 to 1000 rounds per minute. These machine carbines were also based on a variety of different submachine gun models, from Tommy guns to MP18s. Some of these were also based on the M1 carbine, and they were produced from late 1944 up until the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1950. Now, not many of these weapons actually survived, but a few of them have survived, do survive in various Chinese military museums, like the one in Beijing. And that's about it. If I had to choose my favorite, I already chose two of them. My favorites are the Gen C District Arsenal semi-automatic rifle, the Chinese Thompson carbine. But what are your favorites? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.